I have an example blog application with multiple articles, and when I try to edit an article, it's protected behind some HTTP basic authentication. So if I log in here with the proper username and password, I'm able to access it. Now this is accomplished simply through the articles controller using this HTTP basic authenticate with method that Rails provides. Now the problem I have with this is that I'm inserting the uh, name and password directly here in the code. So this means it will need to be stored in the source repository and the password used in production will need to be shared with all the developers, not very secure. A quick fix for this is to store it into an environment variable. Let's call it blog password and we can do the same thing for uh, the username. So doing this, we'll move it outside of the code so we don't have to store it in our repository. However, this means we'll need to set those environment variables somewhere. We could do this before we run each Rails command, but that would be a pain. Alternatively, I can set those values through the user's shell profile like this. However, I don't like putting application-specific configuration into here. Uh, as the uh, configuration grows and becomes more complex, I'll need to keep this up to date, and it'll just become a mess, especially if I bring on more developers. So instead, I want to keep this configuration within the app, very similar to how the database YAML file works. So let me make another YAML file. Let's call it application.yml. Now I can put the username and password settings into here, but I want to make sure that they aren't stored within the source code repository. Since I'm using git here, I can easily do this by putting the path to the application YAML file into the projects.gitignore file. Now when doing this, I like to make an example version that is stored in the repo, so I'm just going to copy that application YAML file and let's call it app.example.yaml. And it's a good idea to mention this in the projects readme. Usually in there I have a list of commands used to set up the application, so that's a good spot to mention copying that example a YAML file. Okay, so we now have a place to put our private settings, but how do we load this into our application? We could do it inside of an initializer file, but some initializers might need access to these settings, so I prefer to do it earlier. I'll do it inside of the application RB. This is where the Rails framework is loaded in and the various gems, so I'll do it right here. First, I'll need to load in the YAML content, and to fetch that, I'll use file.read and then pass in the path. I'll use expand path for this, so I can uh, do a relative path to the current file. That's at application.yaml, and I'll pass in the current file's path into there. So this will return a hash, so I can either set this to a new constant, or since I'm already using environment variables, I can just update the environment uh, variable hash with this hash. Now after a quick restart of the Rails app, our application is working just like it was before, but this time the uh, username and password is stored in an external file and not in our source code repository. Now that we have a central place to store application settings, there are some other things you might want to consider moving into here, such as the secret token, which is in this initializer file. Uh, especially if your application is open source, you don't want to be putting this out into the open, so instead we can move it out into that setting. Let's just call it secret token, and then I'll just paste that into this YAML config. Something else you might want to move into here is the host name that is used when sending email. For example, in my development.rb file, I am setting this action mailer uh, default URL options and passing in the host here, which is a common requirement if you're ever sending email. Now other developers might want this to be set differently depending on if they're using POW or some other developer server, so I'll move it into a, an external setting. Let's call it a mailer host. Now while you're at it, you might want to do the same thing for the test and production environments too, because at the moment, those are setting that same option but to a different value. So if we move this all into the application.rb file, so it's set in one location instead of uh, in each of these separate environment files, then we can have uh, separate configuration options for each of the different environments. So my goal is for my application YAML file to look something like this, where I can provide different settings depending on the Rails environment, whether it be development, test, or production. Now to get this to work, I'll need to adjust the application.rb file because this environment update command won't take this into consideration and the environment update is a little bit picky on what kind of values it accepts. So for now, I'll just set it to a local variable and then I can merge in the hash of settings for the uh, Rails environment if there is one or if there isn't one, we'll just default to an empty hash. 
And next I'll loop through each of these key and values and set the uh, environment key to that value converted to a string because uh, environment variables are very picky. They expect a string all the time, but I only do this unless the uh, value is a kind of a hash. There we go. So this way it won't try to set the full development test or production hashes into environment variables. Now let's see if the Rails app starts up successfully with that change, and it does, so it looks like that worked. Now there is a Ruby gem available called Figaro by Steve Richard, which does pretty much exactly what I showed in this episode. So if you'd rather not uh, create that YAML loading code from scratch, you can use this gem. And also it's got a uh, cute little mascot. Now the readme for this gem mentions some good reasons for storing the uh, Rails app settings in environment variables. This is especially useful if you're using Heroku for uh, deployment as shown here. However, there are also some downsides to doing it this way, which are good to be aware of. First of all, it's important to understand that environment variables must be set to a string value, which is why I'm converting this value to a string here. However, this can cause some unexpected results if you're trying to store Boolean values, for example, if uh, you're trying to pass in false through here, then this is going to be converted to a string which will be truthy, and that might cause some unexpected uh, behavior. We can remove this two string conversion, but then this is going to raise an exception if we try to pass in maybe an integer or some unquoted value through the YAML. Now another thing to watch out for is conflicts with existing environment variables. For example, what if we rename this blog username to just user? Well, there's already an environment variable with this name set by the system. Same with mail or host. There's one called host, but what if you unintentionally override that by just calling your setting host? To avoid this, it's probably best to just prefix everything with the name of your app, but that can get kind of messy having to use that name everywhere in each of your settings. As a result of all this, if I'm not using Heroku, I prefer to not store application settings as environment variables. So I'm going to instead change this over to a config constant that'll just be a hash of options, and that way I won't have to do uh, this rigmarole. And instead you might optionally want to call a symbolize keys on here. Uh, I think it's nicer to use symbols for options like this. Now in our YAML config, we don't have to worry about namespacing or conflicts, and we can use lowercase. There we go, much nicer. Now wherever I reference those settings, I can just uh, call config and then pass in the uh, symbol as the uh, key, and that way it'll use that setting. Let's try this out after a restart of the Rails server, and that works. Now before I go, here's a quick reminder. Whenever you're changing the settings your application accepts, also be sure to change the example YAML file so that it stays consistent. Well, that's it for this episode. I think all the approaches I showed here have their own little advantages, whether you end up storing the settings in an environment variables or a hash. Thanks for watching.